Good evening and thank you for joining us for the coverage of the BP Visco 5000 Nairobi Rally. My name is Tony Gashukia and once again we're pleased to bring to you an action-packed program, compliments of Shell and BP. The rally is the second round in the 2001 Shell and BP Kenya National Rally Championship and is the first to be based in Nairobi this year. Following a series of downpours over Nairobi, the organizers had difficulty in finding a passable route but nevertheless, 23 crews entered to take up the challenge. Duncan's Land Cruiser was dominant over the rough, and he was a predicted winner. But let me not give anything away as we join the crews for the pre-event check. As the cars arrived at the Kenya Motor Sports Club for scrutineering, there was an air of discontent over the chosen rally route, which had more rough in it than smooth. Right in the middle was the infamous Kidong Valley Rockery, which has claimed many rally cars in the past with its treacherous incline combined with a landscape that would be more suitable to the surface of the moon. Drivers broke into groups to discuss the possibility of finding a compromise with the organizers. You know, it's only rough over the rockery. Everywhere else is fine. So, I mean, they've got to learn to lift off. Do you think it's fair on the drivers, uh, putting them through the, these rough stages? It's absolutely fair because if they want to do the safari rally, they're going to use exactly those stages. And I don't see why they should now say that they don't want to drive on in a national rally over those stages. Because it's so rough, it is the most suitable section for the manufacturer's teams to test for the safari. Rory Green was hoping to capitalize on this event following his early retirement in Elman Taita. I don't know whether it goes down to the wire on the second round there. You might see some... Uh, some more crazy driving, but um, the first round, I think everybody is just going to be trying to get through there. Phineas Kimavi was in a jovial mood with no particular concerns. His focus was clear and to the point. Well, the car is very, very fast, uh, but um, I'm not sure I want to hit rocks using that speed. Um, so I'm waiting for a smooth rally and see whether we can actually make, uh, make, uh, make it to the top. After his superb performance in Element Taita, we also had a word with Shahid Wisanji. Uh, we want to do well in the season, we want to win Group N, and we want to have a good position in, uh, in the finals. So. For those of you who follow the championship series, it will now be easier to recognize your favorite drivers, as from now on, they will sport the same number throughout the year, similar to cars in the World Rally Championship. So Rory Green will always be number one, Ian Duncan number two, etc. They may not start in that order depending upon how many points they score through the year. 23 cars lined up at the Bellevue BP petrol station for the 9 a.m. start. Despite all the concerns, there was a lot of excitement in the air and the adrenaline was already flowing, especially with so much muscular machinery all in one place. There was time for a final time check and to get properly kitted out before driver's briefing. The compromise that had been suggested at scrutineering fell apart with insufficient manpower being available to control the reroute so the competitors would be faced with the rockery after all. The event was set in motion exactly on rally time and Rory Green and Orson Taylor headed the field away. As usual, Ian Duncan's Land Cruiser would not fit on the ramp and was started off from the flanks. Paul Bailey was lucky to escape an accident on his departure. The corporate sponsors Kenya Shell and BP Kenya surprised all Kenya Motorsports Club members participating with a cash contribution. The rally would commence at Altepesi, 65 kilometers from the start, causing a lot of interest as the cars passed through Ongata Rongai. The crews got their first look at where they were headed as they crested the Ngong Hills and were faced with the massive expanse of the Kedong Valley in the far distance. The service park was located at Olipolos where the cars had a pit stop service on their way past. Luckily for Rory Green, a faulty mounting was spotted but the corrective repairs would lose him 10 minutes amounting to a penalty of 50 seconds and he was now second on the road. Well, not too disappointing seeing as it's such a, a waiting game rally. It's so, so rough in there that uh, 50 seconds is not, neither here nor there. Due to recent heavy rains, the organizers had not been able to be innovative 
people were forced to use old and trusted all-weather rally routes. There were only three sections in the rally, starting with the longest stage between Altepesi to Kedong. The rockery would be faced as the cars climbed out of the Kedong Valley towards the rifle range. For those who made it, the 14 kilometers from Gong to Olepolos was a flat-out sprint. After a major service and regroup at Olepolos, the crews would be faced with it all over again. The rally was destined to be most suited to the land cruiser of Ian Duncan and Salim Haji, and they took advantage right from the start. They were quickest by nearly 90 seconds on each of the first two sections. The clearance on the rough was an obvious advantage. Rory Green's bad luck continued into the first section with two simultaneous punctures, losing them a further seven minutes. With no more spares on board, they took the rocks very gingerly. They were a very unlucky 13th overall. Glenn Edmonds and Gillian Bailey in car number seven had thrown caution to the wind and were enjoying the raw power of the Evolution 6. Despite the rocks, they were second quickest over the first two sections, trailing Duncan by just under three minutes. Paul Bailey and Raju Semi in the Toyota Celica were next, having overtaken Kavanagh. The Toyota is well suited to the rough, but they still had lost nearly five minutes to the Land Cruiser. It was still good enough for third place. Missing from the front end were Alistair Kavanagh and Piers Dakin. Their rear suspension had collapsed four kilometers into the first section, and all they could do now was nurse the car to service. They had dropped to ninth. Up in fourth place and closing in on Bailey was Shahid Wisanji and Mo Verji in the Sopa Impressor. A fateful mistake lost them three minutes when they booked into Kedong control early. They would spend the rest of the day regretting the error, which at this point had cost them two places. Rob Hellier and Des Page Morris were playing a waiting game. The Mitsubishi was fifth quickest, but the drive had been cautious and tactical. The Shell Subaru Impressor was also being driven with the focus being on a good finish, but if Finis Kimathi and Abdul Sidi are to make a bid for the championship, they will have to up the pace. They were in sixth, ten minutes behind the leaders. Another car suited to the conditions was the Range Rover of Salim Wale Mohammed and Tej Semi. Despite this little incident, which happened only 10 kilometers from the start, they were lying eight. Come on, baby. In 10th place was another of the heavy brigade. Eddie and Andrew Belcher's Land Rover was taking the rough with ease, although it was hot work in the cab. It was a bit like riding a horse up the rocks. rally stages were close to Nairobi, there was plenty of opportunity for enthusiasts to enjoy the action from many vantage points. And with the rally looping, there was the chance to see the cars twice without moving. The view from the service park gave the crews early warning of the arrival of the cars. For many, there was plenty of time to relax whilst waiting. The new format of a central service park has greatly enhanced the professionalism and safety of servicing not to mention that there's not much the support crews can't change within the allocated time. There was only one major service on the rally at the end of stage three. As we looked down towards the flying finish, 
it was Duncan still leading overall and on the road. Duncan's advantage was restricted to the rough as on the open fast stage from Gong he was only fourth quickest, nine seconds slower than the quickest time but his overall lead was nearly six minutes. The, the roads are rough, um, I just think they might have done a slightly better job at choosing which parts to use and have more transport on the bad bits. But, um. Fastest from Gong and taking everyone by surprise was Musa Locho and Carol Wahome, clearly sending out a message that there's more to come. Yeah, it's a different world. I've never had to speak so fast in my life. I couldn't believe it. It's completely unreal. But again, getting used to it, but uh, distances like 50 and stuff, they just don't exist anymore. They just fly past you. They were lying 14th overall having been cautious earlier on. Glenn Edmonds and Gillian Bailey made the decision to drive on a puncture for nearly the whole of the 14-kilometer stage, losing three minutes on the section and a further three minutes in service, slipping for the time being to third overall. We chose to drive on the puncture rather than give uh, six minutes away. It takes six minutes for you to change your puncture? Oh yeah, any any car between six and five minutes from the time you stop. Paul Bailey and Raju Semi immediately took advantage and arrived at service second on the road. They had had no problems and were quietly confident that they could maintain the position. We always knew the Celica was going to be suited to the, the rough conditions and the fast stuff would be for the Imprezas, the guys who could run free formula with no restrictors. But uh, the car's strong and we don't seem to have done any damage. So yeah, it's still a long way to go, only halfway, and we'll see what happens. Helia's Mitsubishi was as impressive as ever. Even with their tactical approach, they had been third fastest on the quick stage, stepping into fourth overall. Just trying to take it really steady. It's just so rough out there. You can't afford to make a mistake. They're just going, just going really easy. Um, and like the last stage is quite good fun to have a bit of a go in that. But otherwise, yeah, going quite slowly. Shahid Wasanji and Mo Verji had been uncharacteristically slow over the Ngong stage. They would have been third except for the time penalty, which dropped them to fifth. It's uh, very rough. There are a couple of mud holes, uh, but the rocks are they're huge. They're sh very sharp. We've damaged three, four tires. Um, we also checked in early by mistake, uh, my, my mistake, and I think we've been penalized six minutes. So. An earlier puncture had also destroyed a wheel. Rory Green and Orson Taylor had climbed up the leaderboard from 13th at the end of section one to sixth overall at the halfway point, although driving with no more spares had been tense. We've done the last two sections with no spare tyre, so obviously you're sitting there worrying the whole time that you're not going to make it to the first, second service, and uh, it's better to be uh, cautious than um, go for it. Phineas Kimathi and Abdul Sidi also drove on a flat for the last five kilometres, deciding they would lose more time changing it than continuing. They were now lying seventh with little prospect of improving. Uh, we have had uh, lots of um, punches. Uh, in fact, we came here dragging our third wheel. Uh, so we, we think it, was, it is very, very rough. Uh, the plan is to make sure that the car stays together. We're putting in bigger tyres, uh, slightly different pattern. So we think that um, we will make it around with our puncher. Salim Wale Mohammed and Tej Semi were still throwing the Range Rover around and with much enjoyment. them, eighth was good. Kavanagh breathed a sigh of relief crossing the flying finish line. The car had made it to service and they could look forward to a new rear suspension and an all-out attack on the second loop to improve on ninth. The Belcher brothers had held on to 10th place, albeit 14 minutes behind the leaders.
The only thing predictable about the results so far is that Ian Duncan is leading, but for the rest of it, it's certainly a typical rally situation where the outcome only becomes known when it's finished. Join me after the break for some more fascinating rally driving. In the business of fleet management, having complete control over your operations is vital. You need to know exactly where your drivers are going, what they're carrying and how efficiently they're getting it there. You need to know how far your vehicles are travelling and what it's going to cost you. Your business depends on this knowledge. In Africa, the business of fleet management faces all sorts of additional challenges. Goods mysteriously disappear, drivers make unauthorised side trips, and cash leaks out on service station forecourts. With the prevalence of fraud in the region, among drivers and service providers, money often seems to disappear into thin air. Not any longer. Welcome to Kenya Shell and BP Kenya's automated fuel management system. The only refueling system that guarantees you will never again fall victim to driver or forecourt fraud. As East Africa's first fully automated refueling system, the benefits are as numerous as they are certain. Not only does Shell and BP's refueling system completely eliminate any unauthorized fuel transactions, it enables you to dictate exactly how much fuel your vehicles receive, it provides a clear and accurate record of their mileage, and it substantially reduces your administrative costs. In short, it gives you complete control over your fleet. In fact, it's so safe that we've christened it the Fuel Proof System. Welcome back to our coverage of the BP Visco 5000 Rally. We're at the halfway stage with three sections covering 144 kilometers about to be repeated. Ian Duncan is in the lead by six minutes from Paul Bailey, but there are a few surprises in store. Before we go back to the leaderboard, let's have a quick look at how some of the backmarkers were getting on. You may recall that not so long ago, we saw Peter Stone guiding Emmanuel Cato from outside the car. Well, he's at it again, but this time he's opted for the rear. The crew actually deserve an award for perseverance. Having broken the front hub, the car was reduced to three wheels and attempts were made to get to service, first forwards, then backwards, all to no avail. They weren't the only ones having fun. There was also Michael Huth and Andrew Doig. Having come last on section one, they struggled over the rocks, but when the steering rack parted company with the body, they were left stranded. This was only Fred Kayser and Kashif Sheikh's second outing in their new car, but it would only be a short event. They had the misfortune of three punctures within three kilometers and had to be rescued not far into the first section. For any crew forced to retire, it's always better to do so earlier than later. And despite the frustration and disappointment, neither Jaspal Mafaru and Kishan Banderi or John Gunjiri and Sudhir Tati would reach the end of section one. Back at Olipolos, the cars were regrouped in Park for May to give time for the back markers to clear these sections. All the debris was cleared off the road to make way for the cars to come around for the second time. Despite having nearly a six minute cushion, Duncan had only one goal to win, and to do so as quickly as possible. By the end of the fifth section, the gap had increased to 10 minutes. Kavanagh and Dakin were back in full flight with a solid rear end. They trailed Duncan by a minute to Kedong, but were quickest up the rockery. Although they were out of contention, they blasted from ninth to fourth on the leaderboard. Rory Green and Orson Taylor were also back on the pace, setting two third quickest times. It was only good enough to move up one place and they were now running fifth overall. There was still no sign of Bailey and Semi in the Toyota who had been in second place. After leaving service, 
The car had overheated and it had not been economical to continue, so they had decided to retire. The fans and the intercooler pump packed up on the tarmac. We started getting the warning signs of the car. Shahid Wisanji and Mo Virji continued their mission and after a stunning drive, emerged out of the valley in third place. Their only problem was a hard charging Kavanaugh who was only one minute behind. Glenn Edmonds had been late clocking into the regrouping park for May and according to the rules would have to restart in the middle of the pack. But the clerk of the course reinserted them fourth on the road on the grounds of safety. The crew decided that a finish and points were more important than facing an uncertain final challenge and settled into a pace to achieve this. Their problems had dropped them to sixth overall. Phineas Kimathi and Abdul Sidi had also settled into a vacuum in seventh place. There was little chance of catching or being caught, especially with only 15 kilometers to go. Salim, Wale Mohammed, and Tej Semi were still trying to tame the Range Rover and in doing so were well inside the top 10 in 8th place. Musa Locho and Karl Wahome had been unable to maintain their earlier blitz from Gong, although their times were constantly improving, which reflected in their rise through the ranks from 14th to 9th. Jim Kahumbura and Nick Deuri were returning to rallying after a long absence and it had not taken long to re-establish the flow and by the end of the penultimate stage, they were lying 10. I just, first I want to get back to ship, then build up my points, I'm going to play it down. You feeling a bit, uh, a bit rusty after all this time? Oh yes, it's there. it was there first in the morning of a very last day, but it's wearing off. Following the demise of the Lancer Integrale of Imran Mogal and Frankie Tower, the field was reduced to 16 runners. John Smith and Adrian Rowe were more concerned about the damage inflicted to their front spoiler than where they were in the rally. 11th overall was not bad, especially as they had had no breaks in the first half of the rally. Fazal Bhatt and Hitesh Chauhan were way out of place in 12th position, which they would maintain to the end. Damage from an earlier puncture had ripped off part of the wing. Shamesh Manji and Tinu Khan had been having a tussle with John Smith on times, but on the second loop eased off and would finish 13th. The little Daihatsu had survived its second outing and after a hard day's work came home in 14th place. Peter Mburu and Dwita Karanja can be proud of two consecutive finishes so far. They were the only Formula 2 car in the event. The Belcher brothers had been in 10th at halfway, but on the second loop the Land Rover was not so forgiving and they slipped down the leaderboard to finish 15th, over an hour behind the winners. They did however report that their concentration had been diverted by four semi-naked women on the side of the road. Tail End Charlie, Ramesh Bhatt and Yutaka Asami were quite happy to finish last, having not rallied for over a year. There was only one section left to sort out final positions, although for Ian Duncan and Salem Haji, winning the stage was not important. They were in fact sixth quickest, but unassailably in the overall lead. Rob Hellyer and Des Page Morris had inherited second place after Bailey's departure and complemented this with consistent times. They were quickest behind Duncan, but there was a time difference of over 10 minutes. They had also seen the naked ladies, but kept focus on the job in hand. Well, I think just by going slowly over the rocks, I think that's why we we are here, to tell the truth, and, and didn't have any, any problems. Alistair Kavanagh and Piers Dakin were quickest over the last section, climbing into third. 
Over the second loop, they were only 30 seconds slower than Duncan, so things could have been different. I'm pleased with it, but I'd like to be uh, up on the winner's costume again, which I haven't been for a while. So, uh, yeah, no, so long as we keep going like this for the time being and then um, maybe start attacking a bit later in the year. Rory Green and Orson Taylor would finish fourth. The 50 seconds lost at the beginning of the rally would not have made any difference. Some of the times uh, on the second loop we were still a bit slower than the first time round, which was surprising. I think it, the road was a lot looser after so many cars had been over it. But um, yeah, we were just happy to get back and have no punctures on the second loop. The three-minute penalty lost for booking into Kedong early cost Shahid Wisanji and Mo Verji two places and they had to settle for fifth. Glenn Edmonds and Gillian Bailey had lost their chances on the first loop and for the second rally in succession had a disappointing result. Sixth overall would, however, score valuable points. Fitness Kimafi and Abdul Sidi were pleased to finish in seventh, and the goal of winning the championship is slowly simmering. And in the new car this year, you've managed to finish twice. You must be quite pleased about that. Yeah, I'm quite pleased about that, and um, I was hoping that uh, we will uh, begin to get uh, better results than seventh. Then came the most entertaining car on the rally in the hands of Salim Wali Mohammed and Tej Semi, who were happy with eight. You've got a car that's very suitable to these conditions. Very true, but I've got a very heavy foot when it comes to the rough, so we were just hitting everything. As Musa Locho and Carol Wahome become more familiar with their car, they will become more of a threat. Ninth on this rally is an early indication. Are you aware that you were quickest on that section into the service park the first time round? Uh, somebody whispered that to me. I was waiting to see it on the computer. <laughs> Do you think that that is a true reflection of your, your attempt? Uh, of course it is. Uh, only that I'm wishing the prize money was there this time. <laughs> Rounding off the top ten were Jim Kahumbura and Nick Deuri. A good result after such a long absence. This was Ian Duncan and Salim Haji's second consecutive win, a position we can expect to see them in until more cars of this caliber are introduced. Yeah, well, we're very glad to be here, but we didn't all rattle ourselves apart behind the gongs. So, yeah, no, it was good. Winning Group N for the second consecutive rally were Shahid Wisanji and Mo Verji. Yeah, it was great, uh, second time round. Uh, had no problems, stuck uh, behind Canberra for a little while, but apart from that it was uh, perfect, had a clean run, no problem with the car. So yeah, we were happy to be back. A good result for Rob Hellier and a first finish this year for Rory Green. Kavanagh is still looking for his first win, but so is everyone else in the top 10. Only 16 cars finished the rally. It was unusual to see Fazal Butt so far down, but good that both Peter Mburu and Ramesh Butt scored points. The compact rally format and efficient computerized result system kept the rally on schedule throughout the day and the atmosphere at prize giving was reminiscent of a valve releasing its tension. The prizes as usual were magnificent and the proud recipients looking forward to adding them to their collection. Ian Duncan and Salim Haji are no strangers to being first and their dominance in this event was respected and awed by everyone. Duncan has the maximum points possible at the moment. Kavanagh and Hellier are tied for now. So are Edmonds and Kimafi, making the championship interesting at this stage. The same applied to the navigators with Salim Haji on top and the battles going on between Dakin and Paige Morris and Gillian Bailey and Abdul Sidi. Shahid Wisanji holds the maximum score after two events, but Musa Locho is ready to pounce. Kaiser did not finish and Shamash Manji has moved straight into fourth. Peter Mburu was the only Formula 2 entry and his finish had given him a commanding lead in the championship. 
There is no doubt that rallying in Kenya is both dramatic and exciting. And the BP Visco 5000 rally had elements of both and a lot more. We hope you had the opportunity to watch the cars live and that you have found our coverage has been both interesting and informative. There are still seven rounds remaining in the 2001 Shell and BP Kenya National Rally Championship with the next event taking place among the foothills of Mount Kenya based around Nyanyuki. We'll be bringing you all that action in our next program. Keep a lookout in the Thursday evening lineups. We hope to see you then. Good night.